Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, before we get into the actual legacy characters themselves, you know, one of the things I always end up thinking about, and I would like to speak to you about and see, you know, where you come in on this. All the way back in 2005, 2006, a group of fans over in the East Coast area had started to make a new web series called, uh, was it Star Trek The Adventures Continue or Star Trek Phase 2, whatever it was at the time. Right, yes. And now you've, you've made some fan films, and I, I'm curious, I think fan films kind of helped get us ready for recasting the classic roles. Oh, yeah. It definitely helped to not ease the pain, but soften the blow yeah. of, hey, there is a very high possibility that if we do anything in relation to Kirk and Spock again, the early years, it's clearly going to have to be recast. And we're going to have to look at younger actors and we're going to have to look at this, you know, how that's all going to play out. And so when you have like Star Trek Phase 2 and Star Trek Continues, yeah, you're definitely looking into who can accurately portray these characters. And, you know, it, it's great that we had those characters coming back in the way that they did. Yeah. So whether you like them or not, the point is they're there. And let's just be honest, all the independent films that were happening between Enterprise and Star Trek 2009 is one of the great things that kept the franchise going by the people who love it, you know, the fans. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. Well, no, and that's, and you're, you're true. Cause that was what five, six years there where if it wasn't a fan production, you just didn't get new Star Trek. You didn't get new Star Trek. I mean, you could always, you know, go back to all the other shows, but there was no new material that, that was out there. Now, you know, I, I want to say this, uh, Jeremy, you mm-hmm. know, what, one of the things, and this is just my, my thing on, on this, you know, I see, fan films and independent type productions of the, of course the same franchise is slightly different in a lot of ways because you can have fans who aren't in the business in any way shape or form wanting to put something cool together and get your friends and make the uniforms and all that kind of stuff oh yeah and then you have that which could be looked upon and viewed as a fan film but then you have some of the more i guess professional grade films like Star Trek Continues, like Star Trek Renegades, which does push it a little up farther past what would be considered a fan film in in that respect. And I've always kind of looked at both of these uh, different genres, or both of these... I've looked at this particular genre as uh, two separate entities, and and I've had people argue with me to do the mat on that. Yeah, I think there's like... Okay, dog. I, I hear you, and I'll let you, I'll ask you a question here in a minute. You you, you did you did warn that as yeah. soon as you start talking, <laughs> the let the, the bark well, she she gets kind of mouthy about Star Trek. She's young; she doesn't quite get it. So you know, sometimes I just have to let her ask her questions. But but, but it's good when the young are passionate like we are. So oh, absolutely, you know, absolutely. The, the, the future is bright. With the yeah. Boys. Well, so <laughs> I I think where you're kind of drawing drawing a, not even drawing a line where you're putting a soft barrier in place. Is kind of in between people not in the industry making fan films, like a fan production, but no, mm-hmm. they don't have the training, they don't have the know-how, they don't have the background, but they have the passion and they have a camera. Yeah, yeah. And guys who are in the industry, you know, who, you know, like, well, like James Kerwin, who directed some of uh, Star Trek Continues. Right. Uh, have you ever talked to him? That guy is scary smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know James. And yeah, yeah, he's... When I first talked to him and found out he was an astrophysicist, I was like, "Oh, that explains your movies." Then, okay, yeah. <laughs> there you go. That yeah, is, yeah that but that, that draws a lot. But when he comes in and he's got the lighting, the lighting technique down, and his, ma- or his director of photography can figure out exactly how to frame and and light the scene, and then he goes in and he goes, "Okay, and now we're going to throw a thirty-five millimeter grain over the top of it just to make it look like Star Trek." Right. That's kind of the difference. Like me in my garage, I wouldn't think of that. It's a great homage to detail and saying, hey, we and it's not so much, hey, we did it right over anybody else. In a lot of cases, it's also you have the ability to do that. You have the equipment to do that. You have, you know, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying. And in many cases, you have the talent to do that. So like a Tim Russ can put together of gods and men and renegades and get Rest in love, Michelle Nichols. Oh, yeah. And JG and Garrett and a lot of people who were in Trek. 
today, you know, even to, you know what I mean? So it's like you have more of a resource in terms of being able to literally pick from a crop of actors that you've seen either in Star Trek or in the case of like Star Trek Renegades, man, we had franchises from all over from, from Star Trek to Adrian Wilkinson, who was in Star Wars and Xena to Edward Furlong, who was in Terminator to Sean Young, who was in Blade Runner. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And then, you know, all the people who are in Star Trek, from Tim to oh, Ricardo, yeah. to, you know, so it's like, it's being able to have that. So, you know, in a way that's, that's where I look at where the separation comes in. It does not diss any, anyone else who's done stuff because again, at the end of the day, yo, we're all doing this because oh, of yeah. the love of it all. And I believe a lot of Star Trek wouldn't be around if it wasn't for what the fans have done. And it's, oh it's no. I mean, look, you look at just the, the simplest things. Fan writing and even uh, Kirk slash Spock uh, uh, gay sex fiction of the 1970s, <laughs> basically. But yeah, but that's what yeah. was out there being created new, and that's what kept yeah. kept Trek going until '76 when they decided to make a new movie. Yeah, it's that thing. It's like the fans' passion is always what keeps it floating. So you know, it used to be writing. Well, now yeah. filmmaking was a little more accessible, especially in the early 2000s. Right. You know, right. where you suddenly didn't need ten thousand dollars in film to make a fifteen minute shot. And now literally everybody has the ability to make some form of a film. Yeah. Something. 